everyone and welcome to the Keen Sports Connection presentation of the Aaron O'Neill Show. I'm Matthew Ruskin and with us today is special guest Lindsay Susalik, the third baseman for the ladies. Thank you both for joining us. Coach, starting with you, you had two huge wins versus the College of Worcester, then a tough doubleheader against Capital. What did you like in the, with those games, and what were you not so happy with? I thought we came out against Worcester um, awesome. You know, Maddie pitched a great first game. Defensively, we made every play that we were supposed to make. We didn't let any bloopers fall. We made the easy routine plays, and um, we came out hitting. You know, we scored early and often, and um, we just made the game look easy, which is uh, typically our goal. Um, and, you know, against Capital, um, we came out and actually played five of the best innings of softball that I've seen our team play. Um, those first five innings, um, we were able to play, uh, we were able to run a successfully a suicide squeeze. We had a hit and run on that scored Maddie from first base. Um, we were making great defensive plays. Lindsay had an awesome um, diving catch on a bunt. Um, you know, we were just doing all the little things right. Um, and then we kind of just shut it off. And that's where, you know, the real frustration came in. You know, softball's a, a fickle game. And, you know, it's, it's like you can play so great and then you can kind of just go in, into a lull. And what we're really talking about and focusing on right now as we move forward um, for the rest of the season and, and just in general is how we can maintain that high level of softball, you know, um, because it's not something that you can like work harder at. Like football, you can go out and you can run faster. Or basketball, you can run faster and play better. Work harder on defense. You know, softball, you can work as hard as you can and just um, maybe not be in it mentally or or make the plays. And so um, that's what we're really focused on as a team right now. Well, to be fair, you can run faster in softball too. Okay, you can run faster. <laughs> yes, but it's still the base. Not always a vital part of the game. Yes, very true. <laughs> Well, you mentioned Maddie Stark's great pitching versus Worcester, and I know, um, Lindsay, you were on the field for this, and Coach, of course, in the dugout, she sets the strikeout record for Kenyon College. What was it like for both of you kind of being a part of that experience? Well, it's really exciting. You know, anytime um, someone breaks a record or sets a record, that's awesome. You know, um, we were very happy for her. It's very well deserved. I mean, she has so far had an amazing career. Um, and, you know, we don't focus a lot on individual records um, because we really focus on team and overall team victories and things like that. But, you know, if you've got a pitcher like that, um, that's striking out that many people and, and puts you, gives you a good chance to win, you're, you know, probably going to win a lot of games. Um, uh, the funny thing, or I was talking to um, someone today at lunch, a professor, and, you know, I said that Maddie's just a junior and, you know, she really strikes out a lot of people. And he said, oh, well, it's, um, you know, it's probably a record that's not going to be broken for a long time. And I said, well, I, if someone comes along that breaks that record, I think everybody's going to be really happy because it means we have a really great pitcher because Maddie really has set the bar. So very I'm true. very proud of her. Yeah, definitely. And Lindsay, what about you, you know, being on the field for that moment? Oh, I mean, it was really great. She, Maddie works really hard, and this record break, just record broken, just really shows how hard she works. You know, we've been inside for all a whole winter. Maddie's been pitching, what, three days a week is what we did? Four days a week, along, you know, with Sylvie and Liz. And it's just great to see that how all that hard work pays off. And Maddie's the t her toughest critic. Like, she gets mad at herself if she accidentally throws a strike on a, you know, O2 pitch. And strikes out a person, even though, you know, it's supposed to be way outside or, you know. So it's just really great um, that she was able to celebrate this and be happy for herself. Well, I'm sure it's nice defensively, too, knowing that you have such a great pitcher standing in that circle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. And now, you know, everyone's favorite part of the show is the off-topic topic. And, you know, for us old-school video gamers, the Game Boy turned 25 <laughs> this year. And so we wanted to know, kind of going back to the past, what was your gaming console of choice growing up and your favorite game and maybe what you're playing now, too? All right. Well, I mean, I, I had a couple, to be honest. <laughs> um, I really like the old Game Boy Color. I still have that here with me in college. Yes. <laughs> Representing. <laughs> I have Super Mario Brothers 2 and 3 with me. And then I also like the GameCube. You know, that's a good classic. Um, Mario Kart. You know there's a new Mario Kart that came out? There was. Yeah. <laughs> and I am going shopping. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what you, sure. Well, um, my brother had a Commodore 64 uh -huh. growing up in this really cool Jumpman game that I always used to play. And then we had the Atari and uh, the Nintendo, the original one. So um, I'm not much of a video game player anymore. I don't have any idea what you're talking about. <laughs> um, I do occasionally play Candy Crush on my iPhone on the bus, which is a recent... <laughs> Recent development, so I'm on level 80. I'm very proud of that. As a Candy Crush addict, I can tell you 
that it is a lot of fun. And also, I grew up playing Atari, actually. So, yeah, that was old school. I like it. So, kind of getting back into the softball diamond now. You guys have a uh, you know, very important weekend coming up. To get into the NCAC tournament, you have to sweep both Allegheny and Denison. So, what do you guys need to do to get these wins? Um, continue to focus on us and what we need to do to be successful. Um, and I think it just goes back to the mentality. You know, we have the talent. Um, you're going to hear a lot of, more of the same stuff. Being consistent. Um, being consistent for 14 innings for two days. You know, that's what we need to do. Um, I know that we are capable of being successful on the field, coming up with the hits, coming up with the defensive plays, coming up with the strikeouts, coming up, up with the pitches, because we've shown it um, in glimpses throughout the season. And now we just need to put it together for 28 innings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I definitely agree with Coach on that. You know, there's been a few games that we come out really strong and then we get ahead and then we kind of get a little bit complacent and we just have to keep that going, keep that energy going because that's the only way to ensure that we'll sweep both of these teams, which are both very good. All right, well, Lindsay, focusing on you a little bit, you started off the season struggling a bit at the plate. Recently, the production has skyrocketed, hitting 333 now. <laughs> How have you been able to turn that around? <laughs> well, over the summer, I had back surgery. And so coming into the season, I was still really sore, you know, and when we play in Florida, we play every day for two weeks, and it was just really hard for me and my back. And now, you know, we get some more time off. I've changed my mentality at the plate. I'm not really looking for that perfect pitch so much, just more of a strike that I know I can hit really hard. And so that's just more the mentality that I have now as opposed to Florida. It does help when your back isn't seizing up as you try to swing. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll give you that one. And so, you know, you're also playing at third base, you know, the hot corner over there, a lot of tough defensive plays to make. What is your mindset going in, and what do you try to do every time you're out there? <laughs> well, it's, it's this is kind of embarrassing, but every time I go out there, I always tell myself, ball, ball, ball. I always tell myself that the ball is going to be hit to me. I have to be ready. I have to know where I'm going to go. And so that's just my mentality. I have to really stay focused because when you let up is the time that they hit it at you and is the time you make the errors. So that's just how I personally deal with it. And Coach's eyes just lit up hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, for all ladies softball fans, home this Saturday versus Allegheny at 1. It's a doubleheader. And then they travel to Denison the next day on Sunday. Once again, the start is at 1. Come out and support ladies softball. I know them. I'm sure they would love to have your support. And I want to thank both... Coach O'Neill and Lindsay for being here. And for the King Sports Connection, I'm Matthew Ruskin, and this has been another presentation of the Aaron O'Neill Show. Tune in next week. <laughs>